What's up everybody, Ryan from Oakland Ghosts, and today we are importing samples into the Deluge. This is a continuation of my Patch from Scratch series. I've pretty much figured out all the instrumentation so far on this song, except I wanted to play some Omnichord and some bass guitar, possibly some guitar later, I'm not sure, but I wanted to get those into the Deluge, and there's a couple reasons why, and there's a couple ways how. So I thought this would be an excellent opportunity to share some of the ways that I like to do it. So obviously the first way that we could do it is we can create an audio track and we could just record directly into the audio track. The Deluge is a live looper. You could record, you could overdub, you could do all that kind of stuff. And that's certainly one way to do it. I don't want to do it for what I'm trying to do, particularly because I don't have a foot pedal. So using a two handed instrument, like a bass guitar makes it a little difficult to like hit the, hit the stop at the right spot. And you could, you could set your parameter and say, I want it to be this long of a loop and things like that, but it's still, it's just using an extra hand to cue when I'm playing all the way through a measure is just not easy and kind of inconvenient and more to the point I might play out of time a little bit I might not get a loop that I like and then the whole song when I'm going into the arranging process which will be in the next video it's gonna creatively freeze me up if anything's a bit out of time so what I like to do is I like to actually record my core loop let's play my core loop for you real quick and these are all the things that we've created in the previous videos. I'll put a link up in the corner there. This is all the stuff that we've created in the previous episodes one by one on the different pieces of equipment. Here we are so far. And so what I like to do is I just record a nice long chunk of this core loop into my dog. A couple minutes worth. This is, this is not my song by any means, but I just want this core loop so I know what it all sounds like. I record that into my DAW, and then what I like to do is then I'll go in and I'll play those external elements right into the DAW. So I, I've already played some bass, I've already played some Omnichord, and now I want to get those into the Deluge so that I can arrange here because I prefer to write and arrange everything on the Deluge. And part of the reason I prefer to do it here is because since I'm interacting with so much of my other outboard gear and my synths, and I tend to perform those live, I want to have an arrangement already figured out. And for this particular song, if I play any other instruments like guitar or bass or whatever, a lot of times I'll just do that after I've already arranged the song and I'll do that in post. I'll do that when I am mixing the song and I'm working on it in my DAW after the fact after if it's already been arranged and poured it over there. But for this song, the melodic elements are so simple and there's not a lot going on. And I'm struggling a little bit with how I want to structure the song when I'm just jamming with it so far. You know, that Subharmonicon has a thing, there's this weird reverse chord pattern that is really cool with bringing in the different elements because it's effectively six voices. So there's a lot I can do with bringing those elements in in different places and things like that. And the Mother 32 one, you know, it's both a hi-hat and an arpeggio. So there's stuff I can do there. But figure Figuring that out requires me to be a little more structured in the arrangement. It's a little bit of a back and forth. And I think because of the way that I've played bass on this song, you know, I've got one that's basically copying the synth bass on single notes, just on the downbeat, just boom, 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 you know, just doing the same chord progression. I've got a variation of that that's going to do it on quarter notes, so a lot faster, just to kind of change the tempo. And then I've got another one that's completely different from those two parts. And so I think in arranging my song, having the bass is gonna dictate a lot of the way I wanna kind of structure the song, and that's why I wanted to get into the deluge. On top of that, when you bring stuff into the deluge, because it's kind of awesome, you can use all the effects. You can use automation view, you can use, you know, delay, all those kind of things. So I can further manipulate and mangle that sample to tie it to the song here in the deluge while I'm arranging, which is another thing I like to do. So let's start with something simple. Let's start with the Omnichord. So what I've done is I've recorded those parts in my DAW, I've comped and cut out you know loops that are already to tempo and I've dropped them into a subfolder on the deluge so I can just bring them in easily. There's a couple ways that you can bring in samples. One is to an audio track. Again, you can just load an audio track up and you can dump the thing on there. So you know you would and you turn it into an audio track. Then you can go in here and you could browse. You could go to your folders, wherever you have it hidden, and you could just load the audio track right in there. Now, the advantage of that is when you load a sample onto an audio track, it's automatically gonna beat sync it to whatever your tempo is, even if it's not the tempo, which mine are, they are recorded to tempo. The advantage of that, of course, is if I change the tempo later, it's all gonna sync up, it's all still gonna work. And 
that's great. Now in the past, the disadvantage of an audio track was a lot of the effects weren't available to you, particularly Automation View. They fixed that in Beethoven, so that's not as much of an issue anymore. But one of the disadvantages in doing it this way is if you have a sample that starts off time, it's not gonna work because it automatically starts the sample on the first downbeat. Enter kit tracks. So let's go in here. I'm gonna delete that because I don't need it. And this is a way, you know, I started doing samples to kit tracks before you could, before they added a lot of the advantages that you can do now in audio, like the effects, like as I mentioned before. But there's some other hidden features too that, that are really helpful in doing it in a kit track that make more sense for this Omnichord that I'm about to do because the Omnichord starts off tempo, but it has a tail that carries over into the front. And I'll show you what I mean. And I'm gonna to go to browse. It automatically does that when you create a new kit. And I'm going to go to my folder that I've had it in. I have it in Ryan, I have it in songs. I have a, I have a folder on here called song specific samples. And that's just when I'm cr creating stuff in my DAW that I wanna bring in that's specific to a song and not is multi-purpose is a sample that I might use anywhere, right? This is specifically for the song. So here's where I got all the things I've done. So here's the Omnichord one. So we're gonna bring that in. And the thing is, it doesn't start on the downbeat. It actually starts, I, oh man, I'm gonna have to figure it out by playing, but I feel like it starts here. So let's just say it's there. And what's great about this, as you can see, is it's gonna loop back on itself. So the first time it plays, it's not gonna play the tail. It's gonna play on your, on your hit, which is what I want. I don't wanna hear the tail the first time that I enter this when I'm in an arranger. I want, it to, I want it to come in where it's supposed to come in, right? So it'll come in, it'll go through, and now every time it'll play the tail because it's gonna, when it loops back, it's gonna hear the tail. And from then on out, when it plays, I'll hear the tail. Now I don't think this is right. I'm gonna have to do some adjustment for sure on this, but let's just take a listen. First of all, I think this sample <laughs> is like probably eight bars. So let's go eight bars. It's like a super long sample. So let's go to eight bars because I play the full chord progression. I think it's eight. I'm not positive, but the way that you can kind of check. So I've got our sample here, so I can just go like this. And the way I check is I just go all the way to the end. And if it goes all the way end, then I know that that's how long it is, right? Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go a little bit longer than the end just to double check. I'm pretty sure it's eight bars, not 16th, but you never, no, it is longer. Okay, great. So let's go 16 bars. Wasn't sure how long my chord progression was there. Let's take a look. So let's go, sure, let's go that. And I'm also gonna double check, make sure, yeah, it is on cut, that's what I want. Sure, let's do that for now. And let's see how long that goes. Right, so it's a 16 bar loop. So now that I've set the length, it's a little tricky for me because this song's fast, it's 135, but a lot of the elements are actually playing at halftime. So I'm bringing, I'm making it feel like it's slower than that a lot of times. All right, so now that I have the, the length set, what we're gonna wanna do is figure out where all these things sit. So for now, I'm just gonna actually turn off some of the outboard gear because I only need to hear the bass and we'll figure out where it's supposed to go. So it's gonna go. I think it's right there. So let's try that. Really quiet compared to everything else. So I'm gonna turn some saturation out. Yeah, it actually starts right there on the second bar. So it's gonna start like right there. Yep. Just using saturation to kind of turn it up a little bit more. I could also use compression to compress this to bump it up a little bit too if I wanted to. But 
looks like I recorded these at kind of a lower audio level. Which doesn't matter because I have the stems in my in my track that I, uh, the DAW version of this that's it's ultimately going to become. So I can manipulate this over there and make it louder, make it softer, make it whatever it is. So this is what I was talking about and the advantage of a kit. The advantage of the kit is because this sample, I don't want that intro to play the tail end that's all the reverb and stuff of the end. I don't want that to play on the first time through. I only want to play that on subsequent loops. So this first time I play it, you'll hear there's nothing. Now it comes in. And now every time it loops, I'll still get that tail. With an audio track, I wouldn't have been able to do that. So that's one reason that I like to use kits. So I've got this one in here. We're cool with that. Great. I'm actually gonna change the color. I like to have things kind of color coded just so I have an idea of what they are. Let's make this one, I don't know, kind of a pinkish purple. Cool. All right, the next one that I wanna do now is I wanna bring in the bass. Now, in this case, it would in a lot of ways make sense to use an audio track. If I only had one bass line that's gonna play, one bass guitar was gonna play the whole time and do the whole thing. You know, it's it's on the downbeat, so that's not a problem. Two of the versions are, one is it starts on the downbeat and then it starts on the downbeat with quarter notes. So a, an audio track would totally make sense for this. Tempo sync, if I need to move it and all that, I don't think I'm gonna change the tempo, so that's not really an issue. But the reason I don't wanna do that is because I actually have three, technically four different bass lines that I might wanna play in different spots. And I don't wanna make four different audio tracks because then when I go over to the arranger view, it's just gonna add more and more and more and more and more tracks. And to keep the arranger view tidy, what I like to do is much like when I'm changing synth parts, I just want a different color. You know, I want, this is a variation of that. That's all it is. And when I'm in arranger view, all you gotta do is select that, turn the knob and you get your different colors, you get your different variations, but it's only on one track. So I won't have to manage four bass tracks. I'll only have one bass track. And I'll know that if I want this version, I make it blue. If I want this version, I make it pink, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And the way that I do that is by making a kit track. And kit tracks are great too, because even if, even if it was off tempo, for example, you could set it to stretch. Mine are at a tempo, so it doesn't matter. All right, so here's, the one bass line, so we're gonna load that in. So that's on this line. The next one is gonna be here. That's the one that's playing on quarter notes. Right, we'll load that there. And then three, we're gonna load this guy. This one's got two parts, which could actually work as four parts. So this one's a little bit different. But the tail end of this one, actually, it works into the fourth part. And that actually, so this one actually works similar to the Omnichord where it's gonna play off time and I want it to carry over, but I don't want it to carry over that first time that we play. So that's another reason that I wanna use a kit. But what I can effectively do now is, let's just set the tempos up. I think this one is actually only eight bars. But let's just check just to make sure. I think I did two, yeah. I just did a little bit of extra, uh, a second loop of the Omnichord because it was slightly different. Just to add some variation because every time I played it, it's a little bit different. So by making a longer loop, it just doesn't sound as robotic and staccato. The bass, it doesn't matter as much. So, right, here's our first part. It's gonna be quiet too. Yeah, it's pretty quiet too. So we're gonna have to bring all the saturation up on these ones too. That's too bad, unfortunately. You know, and it just happens. All right, I'm gonna mute that one. Here's the second one, and I'm probably gonna have to up the saturation on this too. Sounds like I just, when I recorded them, I just recorded them too quiet, or at least I printed the sample too quiet for the deluge compared to everything else. Oh well. I actually don't mind the saturation. Kind of sounds nice on this anyway. It kind of distorts it a little bit. So 
So what I'm doing is I'm just, first of all, I'm even, I'm leveling these out so that they're all the same level. That's important because I'm doing them as just, oh, I'm using shift. We don't want to do that. Okay, six is what I'm doing. This one is going to be the same thing. I just want to make sure that they're all the same volume in the same level so that all that's happening when I make the variations is it's playing the different parts, right? Uh, this one might actually be lower, but we'll see. All right, six, cool. See, I kind of like that. It's actually adding a little distortion, so the saturation doesn't bother me so much. All right, so for the third part, this one is the one that's a little bit different, so. This is the fourth one. This one, it, it comes in just a little bit different at the end there. That's what I was trying to get on. I don't see how loud these all are. Looks like I got them all at 50. I want to cut that even a little shorter so this is doing a similar thing right so what's happening is it starts here but the tail goes over the next bar and that's again I don't want this to play on the first time it goes through but when you hear that I do want it to loop through this is also going to give me the option I could just play just the tail I could play these in combination which is the way they're intended but it gives me effectively four different bass tracks Now I'm just finding that level that I want it to be at. All right, so I'm cool with those ones. Now let's listen to the other ones. These ones I like a little more dirty. And I'm just kind of mixing it. And what I, I like, even though these are all gonna be different subtracks, I like to mix it um, in the base one, or I shouldn't say the base one, the original track. I'm gonna split these off in a minute and I'll show you what I mean, but I like to mix them here now so that I know that the relative volumes are consistent with what I like in the mix. So that's the quarter note one, my second variation. Right. This is just a clean one. And this is just playing right on the downbeat. It's kind of tying with it. I kind of like it saturated. So there we go. So now that I've got all of them in my core bass line, I'm gonna make the variations, right? And the way you do that is I have the other three versions muted. This is one, right? So I like that one to be blue because that's my normal bass line, right? Now I'm just gonna duplicate that track. I'm gonna go like, I'm gonna say I want it to be a variation of that. It's automatically gonna turn it pink. 
I'm gonna go into that guy, mute this one, mute that. Now that's my second track. And I'm gonna go right down the line and do the same thing. So then I'm gonna go to this guy, I'm gonna go three, and I'm gonna mute those. And those two in combination are my main baseline for that, for that riff. So there's that. And then the last thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do one more. And it's just gonna be just that little tail end that, I don't know if I want that yet, but let's see. Right now it's playing the wrong run, so let's go. Right, so just play the tails. Maybe when I do that one, I really want this one to go as long as it's supposed to go. I'm just gonna let it naturally decay on that one if I ever play that one. Probably do a volume control on that and automation view later. But for now, I'm just gonna let the full decay be on there. We'll figure it out. So there you have it. So now we've got all our samples in there, and just like I could do with a synth track that's just a variation, all my bass is on different things. So if I go back to the whole song, let's get it started. And we give it a play. I'm gonna turn off the Omnichord and the bass for now. I'm gonna bring in the first bass on the next loop. Now, like I was saying, the advantage to this is when I go into, and this is probably remembering that when you're in range review, tracks on this row are in line with when you created them unless you've reordered them. So I know that that's my base, right? But it's only the one track. It's only the one track instead of four tracks. And what I can do is I can go, okay, that's my main baseline. If I want to change it and I want that quarter note one, I just change it to pink. If I want the third variation, I turn it to yellow. And if I want the final variation, I turn it to green. Or if I want a custom variation, I turn it to white. That'll just keep my um, outliner a lot more tidy. It'll keep this whole, this, the whole thing a lot more tidy as I start getting more track heavy. Anyway, there you have it. That's how I like to go about entering samples that I play on my other instruments like bass or guitar piano, things like that. That's how I like to get them back into the deluge so that I can use them to arrange the song, which will be in our next video. If you found this helpful, if this was good information, if you enjoy following this journey, remembering it's sequential, I've built a patch from scratch on a different piece of gear in each episode and then built on that to get to where we are here. The final episode, we'll be trying to put it together and starting to arrange it. If these have been entertaining, consider subscribing so you can see the latest episode. It really helps us out. And uh, if nothing else, you get to see more cool synth content, which I post very regularly. I try to keep this all around the creative process. That's really what this all comes down to. There's tons of tutorials on all this different gear and I'm not like that guy. I'm just showing how I like to use these things in a creative way to come up with songs. All right, let's just play out. I'll just play the song out a little bit and we'll call it good. Thanks again for joining me, guys. This has been Ryan from Oakland Ghosts and Ryan out.